Hey folks, Dr. Mike Israel here for Renaissance Periodization, and here's our video for today, How Steroids Can Harm You. Not so great news up ahead. But before I get into the details, I'm going to do a little bit of real talking. I'm not here to propagandize you. You've had enough of that shit from McGruff the Crime Dog or whatever the fuck in your middle school anti-drug class and many other ill-fated government attempts to try to get you to abstain from drugs altogether, and we've seen from the research that that probably works in reverse if it maybe luckily doesn't work at all. Steroids and related anabolics are like all other drugs in the sense that they have upsides, yes, have downsides, have intelligent use cases in the right scenarios, and have insane dumbass use cases in the wrong scenarios that'll get you into deep shit. So what we're going to do here, since we're pretty familiar with steroid upsides, if you're really interested, I can make another video about that, but we have a whole bunch of videos. Just uh, search mm, my last name and steroids. Oof. Um, in any case, <laughs> we have plenty of YouTube videos on the benefits and what you can expect from steroids and shit like that. Um, but here, we're just going to take a look at their downsides. This is not an exhaustive list. I think I probably missed a few things here and there, but a pretty good one. And we see if we can't get y'all... MFers, I think it's too early in the video to swear, YouTube algorithm doesn't like that, to get just a bit more informed so that you make marginally better decisions and you don't fuck yourself up as much as you could doing dumb shit. Um, as long as you avoid doing two things. One is breaking the law. So this entire video is dedicated to the residents of the United Kingdom where steroid use is legal for personal consumption. And nobody else, maybe other countries of the world that don't have laws. And uh, this one is a for sure, for sure, for sure thing. Don't ever use them, uh, at least with my approval, to cheat at regulated sports. So if there are sports that do drug testing, don't ever fucking cheat at that shit. Um, I'm like a pretty decent jujitsu grappler, uh, brown belt. I'm a master's competitor, according to the IBJJF. And uh, you will never see me in an IBJJF competition because it's drug tested. And, well, you can fill in the dots. So yeah, shit is just dumb. So fuck that. Uh, don't do anything stupid and don't break the law. But if you are in a position where you can use anabolics legally and not in a way that is cheating, you should probably know about some of the downsides. So here we go. This is a long list. But I've separated it into general categories. First, not necessarily in order of how bad they are, but pretty close. Chronic high blood pressure. Pretty decent side effect, reliably, of many kinds of steroids, escalates with dose. What does it lead to? Is chronic high blood pressure by itself is whatever. It leads to all kinds of really fucked up shit. And the longer you have it, the more likely it leads to these things. First, kidney failure. You don't want that. You don't want dialysis. Anyone who ever talks about having dialysis, which is just the machine is your kidney, is like a miserable, miserable, terrible, terrible process. You never want anyone's in your life. And usually when you start dialysis, you never get off. Stroke. Fun, you lose all your memories or some shit. You can't speak anymore, can't use half your body. Uh, no thanks. Heart failure, bad news. Maladaptive cardiomyopathy. Basically, your heart thickens in such a way as it makes it worse at pumping blood. In not so bad cases, leads to reduced exercise performance and trouble walking upstairs. In extreme cases, leads to, again, heart failure. So really bad. And about like 1,000 other, well, 1,000, geez, that's uh, 1 million. That's what I wrote. Uh, just a gajillion other downstream problems. Chronic high blood pressure will zap your ass. And the worst part is you can't tell you have it unless you measure it regularly. A lot of times, moderately high blood pressure that's chronic, which will fuck you up, is undetectable from a perceptive perspective. So like you sitting around, you're like, I feel fine. And you check your blood pressure, you're like, holy fuck, it's really high. Oh, looks like it's been high for years. And then in a few years, you're like, oh shit, kidney results aren't great. And uh, you begin to die. So We'll talk about uh, later how to remediate some of these problems to the extent you can, but you got to be aware chronic high blood pressure is a fucking killer. Next, poor lipid profile, which means what? Uh, excess LDL cholesterol or the kinds of LDL cholesterol you can have or the kinds that are very, very bad for you because uh, there's a few kinds, some not so bad for you, some pretty bad for you. Too little, too little HDL, the good cholesterol, a very common problem with anabolics. And uh, some of these uh, lipid profile issues lead to atherosclerosis, which is the filling of your blood vessels with plaque by itself. If you know almost nothing about biology, sounds pretty bad, and it is, and about a million other downstream problems, and including other cardiovascular-related problems like blood clotting, 
which can lead to stroke and embolism, both of which can kill you, especially embolism. And uh, it's nothing you want. So poor lipid profile, not something that is sustainable, not a good idea. Here's a category of problems not often discussed. So there is a body of literature about them. It is a growing body of literature, still evolving. So some of this is a little bit tentative. Brain problems, okay? There is a legitimate concern and possibility that steroid use, especially at a high level for a very long time, makes you permanently less intelligent in some types of intelligence. It seems to affect visual spatial intelligence more than verbal intelligence. Again, the research literature on this is not um, not substantive enough for us to make definitive conclusions, but it's speculative. Uh, it's scary enough to be like, holy fuck. So it could, steroids could make you dumber in the long term. That leads to usually nothing good in life. There are almost undeniably temporary decreases in some types of intelligence, um, and that's damn near for certain on higher doses of drugs. Uh, clearly, I'm drug-free, but in an alternate universe in which I'm not, when I'm on higher doses, which my higher doses are most people's, my jackness, cruising doses, I'm not trying to pat my own back, it's truth, um, I definitely feel a reduction in fluid intelligence. Um, and it fucking blows because I fucking make, don't make money with my muscles, I make it with my brain and, you know, it's a thing. And when I come down from the higher doses, I'm like, oh my God, I know everything. <laughs> so it, it's not great, really not great. Um, it's something I've made peace with, but uh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And you shouldn't like it either. So um, again, I'm not here to propagandize you, but if you look at magazines and fucking magazines, Jesus Christ, it was 1998, Instagram and shit like that, TikTok, all your favorite bodybuilders, you're like, oh my God, that guy's living the life. Like, yeah, but this is shit that happens behind the scenes. So if you're like, oh, I should get on, like, yeah, all right, see you dumber, right? The thing is, maybe some of these brain things don't really happen this way, but maybe they do, and some of them can impact you later in life. So the steroid abuse, and I do mean abuse, not just intelligent use, that you subject yourself early in life can lead to a higher risk of Alzheimer's and potentially dementia later in life. You know anyone for Alzheimer's or dementia? Um, uh, as a matter of fact, late-stage Alzheimer's presents as dementia. Uh, it's nothing fun. You forget who the fuck your relatives are. You forget who the fuck you are. You forget how to speak. Uh, you forget what the fuck you did yesterday, what doing yesterday means. Your brain slowly shrivels into fucking nothing. Uh, and those people don't look like they're having too much fun. So nothing you want. Now, that's all the sort of brain damage, intelligence reduction, capacity reduction type stuff. In the short term, steroids do absolutely affect your mood and uh, your various uh, sort of emotive functions, including, uh, here's just a sample, this isn't everything, uh, uncontrolled inner rage at nothing and everything. You take enough gear, everything pisses you off and nothing pisses you off. Like you could just be sitting watching a movie and you're like, fuck. And people are like, what's wrong? You're like, nothing. Nothing's wrong, I'm just pissed. That sucks, it's not fun to be pissed. Another one you get is really gnarly is uh, what I have termed toxic righteousness. Like you just feel really righteous and really like chip on your shoulder butthurt about shit for no reason. Like I'll be fucking scrolling on Instagram and like legit, real talk. This is the kind of shit that goes through my head. Um, uh, like I'll fucking read the fucking some, – someone would be like – like I post a picture of like, oh, I got a new bar for the gym. And someone would be like, oh, I guess we'll have to delay the Lamborghini fund a while. And the first thought that pops in my head, which by the way, I'm not defending. It's a fucking insane thought. It's like, shut the fuck up. Like stupid fucking Lamborghini joke. Like that's my joke. I make that joke. Like, you're not fucking my friend. I don't even know you. Like, what? Why am I having these? What the fuck is wrong with me? I'm a fucking nobody. I'm just like you. Is a fucking human being? And I'm like, fuck all these stupid people. Like it's awful. It is awful to experience. And in the moment, you can often feel righteous about it. Like you're like, yeah, fuck them. And then later when you come to your senses, you're like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Um, and of course, uh, the crown on the king's head is massive anxiety. Uh, uh, like you won't believe. Um, if any of you have ever done, have had bad experiences with like marijuana when you're coming up on pot, uh, you're just like, fuck, 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 uh, mushrooms. Same idea, just to come up, uh, really gnarly anxiety. Just imagine that, uh, but like for the entire duration of a 16-week cycle. Like you wake up anxious, you go to sleep anxious, you wake up in the middle of the night to pee, you're anxious. Uh, common experience is I'm taking a shower and I'm just like, fuck, 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 I'm having a panic attack. Now, it's not like visually, if you were to see me taking a shower, that will cost you. That's on OnlyFans. But 
if you were just watching me do that, you'd be like, oh, it looks fine. But in my head, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And there's nothing, there's no reason for it. And like, I start looking through my life like, oh, did I do all my work today? Yeah, okay. Um, healthy, uh, financially stable. Um, okay, I guess everything's fine. But it doesn't feel fine. Anxiety fucking blows. It's terrible. And a lot of people don't talk about it. Because why the fuck would you talk about it? It's just awful. But in any case, a lot of times when you see pros like pull out of a pro show and be like, yeah, I'm just dealing with some problems personally, a lot of times it's that. They just couldn't handle the anxiety. Last one is cancer with a question mark. It's not very clear that uh, steroids can cause cancer, um, but uh, that, that potentially they can, but they definitely increase in most cases the growth of any tumors that you have. And so a lot of times you'll have a benign tumor or benign growth that like for a decade or for the entire rest of your life just doesn't go any further. But if you introduce anabolics into the mix, sometimes that benign tumor can turn malignant or just a benign growth can turn into a, a tumor and then bad things happen. So uh, definitely if you have a cancer risk, it's probably higher if you use steroids. That's, uh, real talk, that's how it works. Now, that's the really bad shit. And I'm sure there's other bad shit I missed, but at least you understand the kind of shit we're dealing with here. Their next category here are some gray areas. These are definitely downsides still, but they're um, not quite as bad as the earlier ones for a few reasons, three specifically. Usually they're transient and uh, easily reversible. Like they're bad when they happen, but then they go away. Um, and, and maybe not even, not even that bad when they happen. Sometimes they're entirely or partially preventable with intelligent use or the use of ancillary drugs. And a lot of times they're cosmetic in nature. So they don't really make harm. They just like suck, right? Like, you know, if, if you go to the doctor and he's like, hey, you have fucking heart disease, you're going to die tomorrow. Like, that's real bad. It's harm. If you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, you're ugly. You're like, eh, all right, tell me something I don't know. You're like, oh, sorry, see you later. Like, that's not exactly harm. It just fucking blows. So what are the shit that we're talking about? First is cosmetic shit. Hair loss. Now, in my defense, every fucking member of my distant family has no fucking goddamn hair. Eh, actually, one of my grandfathers had a full head of hair. Fuck that guy. He was the man. Uh, yeah, I didn't get the best genetics, but holy shit, the fucking shit does not make the shit better, right? Um, it just happens. And it doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens to enough people that we're like, if you're predisposed to hair loss, there's a good chance adding antibiotics into the mix is going to make things worse. Again, there are drugs you can take to counteract that. I don't fucking take them because I don't give a flying fuck. If all my hair falls off my body, it'll be great <laughs> because I fucking, I hate shaving it. I hate cutting it. I hate the idea that I have hair. If I could just be bald forever, it'd be awesome. But it's a pain. It's a pain uh, for many of you that care about what your hair looks like. Um, again, uh, not for everyone. There's a distribution about this. Some people don't get this at all. Some people get it really bad. Act Acne, potentially really gnarly acne, like pimples that are like this fucking big and are like purple on the outside and then red on the inside and then have like the fucking, the, the jizz white dot thing that's like bigger than anything you've ever seen in your life. It's just, holy fuck. It's a totally different level of pimple that you potentially get. Um, you can have a weird skin tone, aka the trend tan. Like, you know, you see guys on gear and you're like, how is that man red? Why is he red? Uh, it's just red, right? Some of that's from uh, high blood pressure, uncontrolled. But even to control your blood pressure, there's a bit of a skin tone thing. It doesn't look great uh, in, in all cases. And I'll get to the situation with females where it looks even worse, but we'll get to that in a sec. And of course, um, hair growing in, place God, in places God never intended for it to grow. If you use anabolics and you're prone to body hair growth, wouldn't know anyone like that. Hair will grow to an unbelievably extreme amount all the fucking time and in places where you're like, why is there hair here? It's fucking annoying. It's awful. Again, not a harm, but some shit you might not want. So again, I'm not trying to propagandize you. I'm just giving you the realest fucking deal. Maybe you'll get on YouTube and maybe someone's more real than me. But if you're into the shit and you're like, I want to fucking gear up and be like my heroes are all jacked. There's some other shit they're going through that it either takes a lot of work to remediate or it still happens and you just fucking deal with it. Not exactly all fun. More gray areas. Surprisingly, I count liver damage as a gray area. Why? Because it's hard to really do a lot of liver damage unless you're really doing dumb shit. Uh, if you go on my government-sponsored websites of steroid harms, you'll find a lot of the stuff I've been talking about, and you'll also find liver damage. It's, like, oh, it's up there. It's just very easy to research, very well documented. The thing is, it's almost in always insanely exaggerated. In most people, so they've done studies where they've given oxandrolone, Anovar, at relatively high dosages, up to like 50 milligrams a day, to like Japanese women for like a year and a half, and they had no liver value ele elevations. What? They just liver perfectly fine. In order to really cook your liver real bad with oral steroids, so first of all, liver damage almost exclusively occurs with oral steroids with a few exceptions. And 
uh, also you have to take usually a really gnarly orals and for like a fucking really long time. And the thing is, if you do some liver damage with orals, your values get all fucked up. If you stop using orals and drop the rest of your gear for a few weeks or a few months, your liver really is unbelievably regenerative and just generally goes back to being fine. So it is, in my estimate, not this completely terrible thing. Can you get liver cancer abusing steroids? Probably. You got to really try. You got to really try. So I would say this is a, a really unusual case. Um, next, endogenous test production shut down. You guys probably know about this. Your old, the boys aren't making any tests anymore because they detect that there's a lot of testosterone or testosterone-like substances in the blood. And your access, the HPTA access is like, well, clearly the uh, testicles are producing way too much testosterone. Let's shrink them shits down to damn near nothing. That happens. It doesn't happen to everyone. Some people, when they get on gear after a few weeks or months, their testicular size radically reduces to something between undetectable to like the size of like a caper. Uh, one of my, I had a doctor as a client once and that's what she kept telling me because back then I was natty and she was like, don't do it. And I was like, I'm going to do it. She's like capers, capers. She always told me about that. Um, so that can be a thing. You know, it's all fun and games until like you know what I'm saying, bring her whole girl home from the club and you're like, so baby zip. And she's like, Ooh, there's your dick. Where else is the shit? I'm not like bitches are interested in balls per se, but you got some explaining to do. And your ejaculate volume can be profoundly small to essentially non-existent. Like you're still busting nuts. Ain't nothing coming out. Nothing's happening. Not exactly the worst thing in the world, but also you can reduce your fertility to such an extent that you are unable to have children approximately and maybe that you are unable to ultimately have children. People have made themselves permanently infertile steroids. Again, very rare, but it could definitely a risk. Like, so if you like are 33 years old, your health is in check, you know what you're doing, you live in the United Kingdom where it's legal, and you had like three kids anyway already, and you're totally good, you fucking don't need any more kids, hey, you know, rock on, whatever, fuck it. But if you're like 23 or whatever, and you're like, I really want a family someday, but first, I'm going to get a pro bodybuilder, like, you got some fucking decisions to make. Um, again, a lot of people just, there's a huge spectrum of responses. Some people, their testicles remain exactly the same size. Their ejaculate volume remains very robust, which is actually quite annoying. Uh, and I'm not like I'm speaking from experience. You know what I'm saying I don't actually ever have sex, so it's not an issue. And uh, but it, it ranges all the way from like you get all the bad stuff to you get uh, all no effect and everything in between. So it's just something to keep on your radar. Again, not it's not fucking deadly or anything like that, but definitely something to keep in mind. Lastly, and this is specifically for teens that use steroids and. Me saying that pains me because if you're a teenager and using steroids, you just like doing the dumbest, lamest fucking shit you could be. It's like, motherfucker, what are you doing? You grow muscle like a fucking weed anyway when you're a teen. I'll put it to you this way. If you're not growing a lot of muscle as a teen, you're probably not eating enough. You're not training enough in, or too much. And if you do have those boxes checked and you're still not growing muscle – you're just going to look like Harry Potter the rest of your life. Accept it. Be a computer programmer. You're going to make tons of money. You're going to be married. You can marry a stripper or whatever is the goal when you're a nerd. And you don't worry about muscle. And taking steroids as a teen is rock fucking stupid. It's the dumbest shit you could ever do. And here's the kicker. If you take specifically certain kinds of steroids as a teenager, it, some of them close your growth plates in your bones early. So you'll never reach your maximum adult height like you were supposed to. You can be like, I'm going to take steroids so I can finally beat up my dad. And then it turns out dad's six foot three and you cap out at five foot seven and you're age 40 and dad's still beating that ass. Good job. You fucked up your life. So um, if you're a teenager and you're watching this, don't fucking take steroids. Just don't fucking do it. When you get to be an adult, you live in the United Kingdom, <laughs> maybe you can think about it after age 25. But if you take it before, you're making some interesting trade-offs. If you take gear before you're 20, miss me with that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Don't do, don't do stupid shit like that. All right. Almost done here, but hold on. What about females? They get all the side effects we talked about pretty much, other than the testicle ones, clearly, although they do become infertile while on steroids approximately. Um, the sides are almost always way worse. And even if they're the same magnitude of sides or even lower magnitude of sides, generally androgens <laughs> masculinize everything and females tend to like to remain to some extent feminine. Now, of course, there's a huge spectrum. And again, politically, I'll just put my cards on the table. I'm a libertarian, so I think anyone can look like or be whatever the fuck gender they want. Awesome. I'll shake your hand no matter who you are. But a lot of women like to stay relatively on the female side and they get into steroids and they're like, holy fucking shit, I'm turning into a man. Well, no fucking shit. What do you think was going to happen, right? 
for health, appearance, fertility, you name it, females take huge, huge side effects. I will get, I'll say this. If you're female, you follow this channel, you're considering using steroids, do not fucking dabble. Don't go on fucking Reddit and be like, oh, I'm going to Google a cycle. Oh, Anivars, first time female cycle. Great. Don't do that shit. Talk to someone like Broderick Chavez. Talk to someone like Joe Jeffrey. Yes, they cost money. Your health and appearance, I promise you, are valued more. And have someone who can explain to you the very nuanced, intricate way in which females who choose to use these substances should do so to minimize all the side effects. I promise you, you don't want receding hairline being one of them. Uh, and maximize the benefits. Males taking steroids is relatively straightforward. Of course, it's nuanced, and we have a bunch of other videos about how nuanced it is. But for females, it's a fucking minefield. So don't just roll the fucking dice. Be like, here we go. Got these drugs. Boom. Because you'll get all the good gains, and I'll be sweet. You get some other shit you're really absolutely not interested in. All right. How do we mitigate these effects? Because I'm not going to do that stupid fucking propaganda shit where I just tell you, oh, these are all these bad things, and that's it. See you later. Like, okay, how do you mitigate them? First. You run safer drugs, drugs engineered to be safer by laboratory scientists, better living through chemistry, drugs like oxandrolone, aka Anivar, primobolin, testosterone, a fine drug to run in moderation, and uh, another drug like Masteron, right? But really like VAR and Primo are like the kings of the safer use model. Safer, not safe, safer. And try to minimize or stay the fuck away from drugs like Tren and Halo and Anadrol. And I know, I know, we've all seen the Tren memes, like, when when she feel that Tren dick, like, like, word up. The thing is that people mostly making the Tren memes and laughing at them were people not on Tren. Because when you're on Tren, you don't laugh at memes anymore. You look at memes and you're like, everyone who makes memes is fucking stupid. I hate memes. I hate my fucking phone. You break your phone, stab yourself in the face. Tren instantly heals the wound. You're basically Wolverine, but full of hate. In any case, shit's not fun and it fucks you up. Try to stay away from the gnarly drugs. Now, a lot of times the gnarly drugs are the ones that give you the best gains in the short term. In the long term, the safer drugs do an unbelievable job of giving you awesome gains with a lower risk profile. So if you're short-sighted, just do a lot of trend and halo and anadrol. You're the fucking man. If you're taking a long view, do the safer use shit and don't fuck yourself up. To that end, point number two is moderate your doses. Essentially, you choose a low dose that gets you some of the results you want. And that's your peak dose that you use. And then as soon as it's not getting you the results at pace that you want, then you consider thoughtfully of mildly incrementing the dose. So you start really, really low, which, which means what? Like you know, somewhere between 200 milligrams and 500 milligrams total of your first actual cycle, not just orals or whatever. And then you work your way up if needed, as needed. By the way, that's for men only. Women is like a, a 50th of that. As needed per your goals. Do not fucking start at a gram. Don't start at three or four. Don't do what the pros do because you're not a pro yet, first of all. Second of all, a lot of pros are just profoundly stupid people. Not all of them. Plenty of them are awesome. But a lot of them are dumb as fucking rocks and will do stupid shit all the time and you just don't want to copy people like that. The worst thing is that you copy someone, how they do, and then you meet them in real life and you ask them questions and they don't even know what they're doing and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, who am I copying here, right? Um, point number three, take off or low periods regularly. Get off of drugs entirely for months of the year or go to TRT levels for months of the year. Really good idea. If you're just blasting all the time, I think we all know where that road ends. The answer is Rich Piana. Sorry to put a fine point on that. But in any case, some shit like that. Lastly, get blood work and ancillaries. So first of all, control your blood pressure with medication if necessary. There's no shame in taking medication for blood pressure. I literally know guys who are in fucking gear and they're like, man, fuck that. I'm not taking drugs for my blood pressure. I'm fucking going to do it with exercise and diet and bro and like herbs. And motherfucker herbs, you put fucking bathtub trend into your body, idiot. What's one extra fucking blood pressure drug going to do except keep your dumb ass alive? As a matter of fact, while I'm on the subject, don't take the blood pressure drugs. It's great if you fucking inject your ass out of the gene pool. In any case, like, Pharmaceutical control of blood pressure is a very advanced science. It's essentially, blood pressure drugs are in like their fifth generation now. They just don't really have any side effects, and they're unbelievably cheap. They're super easy to get. You go to your doctor, you say, I have high blood pressure, and he's like, how's your diet? You're like, it's great, and I exercise a lot, but I, th I think, you know, you just make up some bullshit. Literally, I, I, I shouldn't be saying this, but like, yeah, I have a family history of blood pressure, and they're like, okay, great, and they just prescribe you blood pressure meds, and they fucking work, and they'll keep you alive. So do that shit. It's a real good idea. Next one, uh, do not take uh, – Telmasartan and uh, PPARs are a good class, but that's more specific stuff, something you learn from someone like Broderick Chavez or Joe Jeffries. Um, 
Do not take antiestrogens, either at all, preferably, or just, just in the few weeks before a show. As the thing is, cosmetically, there's nothing antiestrogens do that, that takes like eight weeks or 16 weeks. It takes like a week and a half or two weeks. And if you manage everything else properly, you usually don't need anti-estrogens at all because estrogen is part of a really good look. Does estrogen promote the storage of excess body water? Yes. But by taking something like telmosartan and potentially a few other drugs like aldactone, et cetera, you can completely get rid of that part without poisoning yourself with anti-estrogens. Multiple research studies show that probably the most dangerous thing about steroid use is concomitant long-term anti-estrogen use. Lowering your estrogen first and also introducing the anti-estrogen drugs separately as another causative factor uh, really promotes bad health in a variety of ways, especially cardiovascular. It's not some shit you want to fuck with, uh, so don't do it. Lastly, or sorry, almost lastly, if your hematocrit gets too high, too many red blood cells, that can lead to stroke and a bunch of other bad shit. Regular blood donation is a good idea, right? So we can do that. Um, metformin. A drug like metformin to reduce systemic inflammation and boost insulin sensitivity is really good. Metformin almost certainly does not cost you muscle gains. The studies on uh, the ones that say they do are probably uh, poorly conducted and it's not actual. So metformin does increase AMPK activity, which is a catabolic regulator, but it probably doesn't do so in muscle tissue. So you're probably not costing yourself any gains. Experientially, from people who use metformin in the bodybuilding setting, there's not this understanding that metformin gets you less jacked. Like, no one's really ever experienced that, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. We could be wrong about that, but it's unlikely. So take it. It's very good for your health in, in the context. And a lot of other stuff covered by Barra Chavez, and specifically because he's really big on this kind of ancillary stuff, Joe Jeffrey. That's right. He's from the United Kingdom, and he has two first names, and he has tattoos on his face. He's the fucking man. Give him a look. Uh, Joe Physique Collective. You guys know how to use Google. Shit. All right. Is there more? Well, sure. There's other shit like growth hormone, insulin. It comes with its own downsides. Fat burners, not the ones you buy at GNC. The ones you buy from the guy with a trench coat behind the dumpster behind the GNC where you're like, hey, man, I'm trying to get really lean. He's like, oh, yeah. Ta -da. And he's not flashing you. Or maybe he is, but he's got miles, needles. You're in. Those have all crazy downsides themselves. Let me know if you want me to do a video about them and if enough of you upvote the people that say do a video about the following fat burners or some shit, fat burners in general, I can. Um, I don't love talking about this kind of shit because uh, uh, I just rather help natty fucks out. Um, I'm a natty at heart, if that means anything. Probably not. Um, so let me know if you guys want me to expand anything I talked about here, talk about other classes of drugs, maybe make some more videos for you guys, just try to get you educated. Um, uh, until then, be safe, be strong, and uh, don't do anything stupid you're likely going to regret later. Peace. So, thanks for tuning in for this video. Now, here's the thing. We talked a lot of shit about steroids and how much you're going to be in for bad things, but what about how much can you gain from steroids? Well, this video right here might sort you out. Give it a look.